I'm Brigadier General Richard Clark, and I'm the Commandant of Cadets. The role of the Commandant is basically to ensure the military training for all the cadets. We take care of summer programs, we take care of the training throughout the school year, um, as well as the character and leadership development. That falls under the Commandant of Cadets. And really, in a nutshell, the aspects of the cadet life outside of academics and athletics falls under the Commandant, and that's our responsibility. When my family and I first arrived uh, at the Academy for this assignment, um, we were on the chapel wall. We were trying to take a couple pictures, and I was taking pictures of my wife, Amy, and the kids. And a cadet came up, and he didn't know who I was, had no idea what I was doing there. But he came up, and he said, hey, sir, can I help you out? I'd like to take a picture of you and your family so you could all be in on one. We were the only people out there. He was walking, he was probably about 50 yards away, but he made a beeline towards us. He saw that we needed a little help, and he did. And he took a great picture of us. It was very much appreciated by my wife because it was our first day. She wanted to get that photo. The most meaningful part of that was it demonstrated the kind of people that we have here. I usually start off, I go to the gym in the morning, about 5.30 come in and start with meetings. Uh, we do have a lot of meetings here, more than I ever imagined as a cadet. I spend as much time with the cadets as I can. I go to classes and sit in on classes a lot of times. I have meetings with my staff as well as other staffs. I go to cadet practices for different intercollegiate sports. We have a lot of dinners at our house where we'll have uh, 150 cadets come over give them the opportunity really to interact with me. If there's questions that they want to ask or, or just things that they want to know why we do uh, certain things, I, I try to share that with them. And then I, I impart any kind of knowledge that I might have as far as uh, what's going on in their cadet lives right now or their development for the future. I just try to make myself accessible so that I can kind of understand where they're coming from and they can understand where I'm coming from. I was this far from quitting and I remember sitting in a phone booth, um, we had phone booths back then, I know a lot of cadets don't even know what that is, but I was sitting in a phone booth, I was talking to my mother on our first phone call in basic cadet training and I told her that I was gonna quit. I said, mom, I'm ready to go home. She said, okay, you come on home. And I looked outside the glass of that phone booth and there were five of my classmates standing there reading their contrails outside that phone booth and I thought, man, I can't leave these people. I mean, in only about the first 10 days, we had already formed a bond. There's no question what I'm supposed to do here. And when I see the cadets out on the terrazzo or in class or on the athletic fields, I know what my mission is. I know what my job is and I know why I'm here, to help them to be all that they can be, to help them develop as the leaders that they want to be and, and to really be the best person and the best uh, leaders of character that they can be. I think that it's a lot more um, academically rigorous uh, as compared to when I was a cadet. The academic load that the cadets have right now is really heavy and it's very uh, very focused and very demanding. I think that's probably the biggest change. As far as the military aspects go, things aren't that much different. The focus there is a little bit uh, more geared towards combat skills and expeditionary skills as opposed to when I was a cadet. When the cadets are taking the oath and I'm uh, afforded the honor of giving them the oath, the first thing that's going to be running through my mind is don't mess this up. Uh, that would be devastating. I'd never forget that one and I'd never live it down. So I will get the oath right. But the real thing is the significance and the honor of swearing in 1,000 of the finest people that the Air Force will ever know. To be able to bring them in as officers, as second lieutenants, is an honor that I could never ever uh, compare to. I got to get the timing right for the hat toss and the Thunderbirds flyby. I don't want to mess that up. The fact that, that these folks have committed to joining our, our armed forces at a time when we're involved and, and engaged in conflict around the world and they're still willing to do that says so much about them and their patriotism and their commitment to this country and, and I owe them everything I've got. 